purely and simply, really. Um, headlines haven't been uh, kind to the Islamic faith of late either. So-called Islamic State extremists have become a major threat to world security. And so we won't shy away from those difficult questions this morning. Why has extremism taken hold? Why are young men from Cardiff caught up in the blight of homegrown radicalization? And why do, or how rather, do these people who celebrate the peaceful faith of Islam here feel about those people who take a different view of that religion? Um, Amanda Morris, who converted to Islam around, well, 18 years ago, is here with us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Uh, from Canada. And then, yeah, originally here in Cardiff via Swansea. Take us back 18 years ago and your moment. Was it a moment or was it a process? No, it, it was quite a long process. And when I say 18 years, that is a, 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 an educated guess because it was such a long process. I actually went to London Central Mosque and made a declaration of my faith in 1997. So when I dated, that's what I dated from, but I think probably from about two years prior to that, I would actually have been considered believing ah. in Islam and everything that it taught. And so, so how did it start to grow? What was it that, that, that first got you started? Um, well, I think my upbringing was very agnostic. Um, my parents are Christian with a small c. We did Christmas, we did Easter, and that was about it. I can count on two hands the number of times I've been into a church. Um, and while I appreciate that they did that, that they, you know, sort of left me to my own devices to you know, decide what faith I wanted to follow. Um, I definitely was looking for something from quite a young age. So uh, I lived in Japan for several years. And while I was there, I sort of got into spirituality, Buddhism, Shintoism, things like that. But it didn't appeal, really, because it, it wasn't logical. And at the end of the day, I'm a very logical person. My dad was a scientist. Um, he always taught us, not intentionally, I don't think, but he taught us that if something doesn't make sense, if you can't prove it, it's not worth believing in. Um, so when I was in Japan, I actually, through my work, had a lot of Muslim friends from various different countries. Um, and I also had a very close friend who was Japanese, and she had converted to Islam a few years prior. And really, just curiosity got the better of me. It wasn't ever anything I'd ever considered. So I thought, you know, I'd like to know more about this. So I just basically subjected the poor woman to endless questioning, and she always had good answers. Uh. And if she didn't have good answers, she would never give me just anything. She would say, I'm going to go and find out for you. And I really respected that. Uh, so. And so here you are now, involved with the mosque here. What does, what does being Muslim mean to you now? What does it involve? Um, well, I guess at the core of it, it's just being a, a good human being and living your life in the best way that you possibly can, um, being considerate of others around you, um, taking care of people, be, not being selfish, um, being always conscious of what God has instructed us to do in our lives. So, you know, that's, that's at the core of it, really. Uh, and are you, are you aware of what others think of you as a, as a Westerner who is clearly a Muslim? You, when you say others, do you mean uh, like the, the general population? Yeah, I, I just wonder if, 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 you, if, if you feel accepted if you feel as invisible as anybody else is or do you feel visible by whom by but by, by non-muslims by but no but by oh, by just as, as you as you walk along the street i think the thing is as as a muslim and obviously i'm visibly muslim because i wear i wear a headscarf and i dress very modestly so i think when i'm walking along the street a lot of people assume that i'm not a westerner and, um, you know, I think there's sort of an idea that Muslims come from the subcontinent, and that's not true. There are quite a few Muslims from, obviously, the Middle East who are the same color as I am. They are white in many, many cases. So I think when, when I'm walking down, like, for example, City Road, people will speak to me in Arabic and Turkish and, and Kurdish and things like that. Yeah, which, which is the country. most multicultural, well, or, or at least yeah. it's the hub, the heart of, of multicultural yeah. Cardiff. So, so they just sort of assume that I'm from one of their countries, and, and they're usually quite shocked to find out that I'm not, that I'm actually from Canada. Oh. So, you know, that's, that's always a conversation point. And you've got, you've got a young son? I've got two boys. Oh, two yeah, boys. two boys. Yeah, they're, um, they're in... They're 15 and 11. Right. So uh, the younger one's going to be starting high school in September. Uh, so, yeah. And so, and, and how, how do they get on? Because as I say, it's, it's been, it's a difficult period for yeah. Islam. Yeah. This hideous organization has taken the name of your religion. How much of a problem is that? Has that changed things, changed perceptions, changed 
change the way that you're able to, to, to get on with things? Um, you know, for me personally, no, it hasn't. Um, I became Muslim not long before 9-11. And I think, you know, that's sort of considered the, 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 the turning point. But to be honest, before I became Muslim, Islam didn't have a fantastic name either. And that was one of the things that made me curious about it. Because we used to hear about, you know, stuff in the news about Muslims doing this and Muslims doing that. But on a personal level, I haven't encountered anything. Um, my sons as well haven't had any problems at all, you know. And they are, they are practicing, you know. They, they, they identify themselves as Muslims. But they haven't had any issues at all. So um, I'm aware that there are people who have had problems, and I've just been very fortunate not to. Um, but at the end of the day, I think the vast majority of British people are quite, you know, are quite well educated and are quite well read, and they know what's what's true and what's not. Um, so I think if, if anybody is thinking, you know, is reading the media, they will, I, I would invite them to come down to the mosque and to see what the, what the real story is, really. Yeah, I, well, we're having a wonderful time this morning. So thank you for making us so welcome, um, Amanda. That's Amanda Morris, uh, who's here with us at the mosque in Cardiff, well, very close to Cardiff city centre, and we'll have more from here very, very shortly. It's more purely and simply, really. Um, headlines haven't been uh, kind to the Islamic faith of late 